Yeah. I see. So, um, what, what is your definition of citizen science and um, how did you get involved at the beginning? Uh -huh. the, there are many definitions of citizen science because the citizen science has a long history mm -hmm. in many countries. Right. And, uh, uh, but uh, maybe common definition currently is uh, defined as a uh, scientific work Mm -hmm. uh, done by the members of ordinary citizens mm -hmm. under the uh, supervisor collaboration or scientists mm -hmm. of science institute. I see. That is a de de definition of Oxford Dictionary <laughs> right, in 2014. Right. Yeah. That's become a kind of international definition now. Mm -hmm. And I think it uh, cover many uh, citizen science projects. So that mm -hmm. might be. Mm -hmm. I see. So Sean, does it, uh, how does it motivate you at the beginning to start this in Hong Kong? <laughs> well, if you want the actual truth, then um, I was talking, you know, in the, the foundation I work for, we have um, a few links in various countries ourselves. And um, one of them um, is the Bristol uh, uh, Nat uh, Natural History Consortium. And so, as you know, Bristol had Bristol and Bath had, uh, you know, were also participated. So I was talking. We just finished a project, and I was skyping the Matt Postles from uh, from Bristol, and he said, um, I flippantly asked him, I was like, so what's next? And he goes, Have you heard of the City Nature Challenge? And I'm like, No. Mm -hmm. What is that? And so I immediately, um, you know, looked into it and thought we could do well on this. You know, I think you know this is a great opportunity to get more people involved in biodiversity and, right. you know, being more aware, being more engaged and we love the idea of iNaturalist and so mm -hmm. it was natural to us to sign up, you know, but uh, unfortunately, of course, uh, Bristol lost, <laughs> um, you know, I mean, we beat Bristol, of course, uh, but, um, you know, we're, you know, obviously everyone, you know, did exceptionally well and can only move forward, you know, with all the other cities. So, yeah. I see, yeah. <laughs> so you share the, the three strategies for success with us. Yeah. What are they? So, um, for you know, for the way we worked in Hong Kong, we're kind of a, a bit lucky because the government have just released, you know, a couple of years ago, the government released a biodiversity strategy and action plan. A government policy, and a big part of that is community involvement in biodiversity. So, like awareness, engagement, monitoring, all things citizen science actually fits nicely into. So we use that as a crux in mm -hmm. which to actually, you know, get other organisations to actually support, you know, what right. we are trying to do. So we worked with a lot of NGOs, so WWF, the Nature Conservancy, EcoBus, the uh, Caritas uh, um, uh, organisations, and we just said, just all you have to do with the City Nature Challenge is download our naturalist and take mm -hmm. a picture. That's pretty much it. So we got them involved. We also got uh, schools and universities involved. So you know, most schools learn about ecology anyway. So this was a fantastic way to give them an extra le other learning experience you mm -hmm. know, um, through this competition. And of course, you know, be proud of what Hong Kong has. And of course, through the public. Yeah. Um, so the general public. So that was our three main ways mm -hmm. to actually you know, mobilize Hong Kong to, you know, to join in. Yeah, that? that's wonderful. Mm. So, Hiromi, in your experience, um, how to actually empower citizens to help break through uh, the limitation in data collection of research or surveys? Mm, that's a hard question. <laughs> uh, but uh, so anyway, the, the uh, loss of biodiversity is one of the serious issues of, uh, mm -hmm. uh, uh, in global environmental. Uh, Problems. So, and actually, the number of scientists is uh, not enough to identify the species. So, actually, 84% of the living creatures in this planet has no names. Mm. Mm. So, how can I? Yeah, uh, yeah. It's not record no, before. No, yeah, yeah, no, the ecological factions without uh, no name. And we right. actually don't know what kind of species play what kind of roles in a certain ecosystem, such as rivers and mm -hmm. tropical forests. 
So that is the first thing people have to do. But uh, so citizen science is really suitable to uh, find a uh, new species mm -hmm. or, or um, uh, another yeah, distribution of species and because of the uh, citizen uh, may, can collect big data mm -hmm. in the long term. So that uh, uh, only scientists or government can do that. Mm -hmm. So the, this program is really a uh, 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 merit to promote right uh, yeah identify the species. but how to validate the accuracy um, of data collected by citizens yeah before the sounds of scientists are uh, 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 spectacle about the data quality but now the many system to uh, so to have a good quality of data even the citizens mm -hmm. so, but there are many ways to maintain the accuracy of the data. Mm. Just to sort of follow on from that, you know, the main medium for the City Nature Challenge was iNaturalist. Mm. And the great thing about that is that the whole process is actually transparent. If you take a picture of something, you can you can offer an identification, or if you know you take a picture of a butterfly, you can write down, it's a butterfly. So everyone and, see it in real time. Yeah, right? and yeah, and it would just say butterfly or order lepidoptera is you know from that, and then other people can actually see what you know your uh, picture, and they can further identify it down the the taxa. But you can actually see how that works. It's a transparent thing, so um, it's not meant to replace ordinary or like traditional surveying mm. methods you know which of course all the scientists can do themselves mm -hmm. but this is a very genuine way in which the public can get involved with um, doing something you know that that is so simple mm -hmm. and just taking a picture it's not just biodiversity as well it could be taking readings about air quality mm -hmm. or noise quality or noise pollution or something like that but the simplicity of how to actually record that is what actually brings a lot of people in. Right. You know, when you think, you know, for the ordinary person, maybe what scientists do is quite complicated. You know, it takes a long time, or mm -hmm. this, you know, the method is convoluted. But for for ordinary citizens to to get involved, sometimes it's just a touch of a button, mm -hmm. and that's it. So something yeah. very simple and fun. Yeah, exactly. Okay. You know, and of course, you know, yeah. the data can then be further scrutinized. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not going anywhere. It's, it will always be there to. You can build at. on it. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. 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 AI tells a uh, yeah, participant what mm -hmm. kind of species you know, in your iPhone, mm -hmm. the list of the species that the candidate listed. Yeah. I say. They can choose. So even the people don't know the name, mm -hmm. they just uh, uh, click. Mm -hmm. and, uh, it in suggests a, just yeah. in a, 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 a 24 hours or I uh, say uh, yeah, email. <laughs> so it's actually it's very citizens, yeah. citizens yeah. empowerment yeah. as well, right? Yeah. 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 So I, I have a question, it. particularly about Japan, because uh, citizen science started long time ago in Japan. What, yeah. what do you think are the cultural factors that enable it? Oh, so anyway, Japanese are now like nature very much, mm -hmm. and Japanese also like recording. Mm -hmm. And actually, maybe Japan is the long, uh, oldest record of cherry blossom. Mm -hmm. uh, that is starting uh, uh, 100 to 200, well, and 200 mm -hmm. years ago. And it's, it's uh, one of the scientists uh, mm -hmm. uh, sees the data from a lot. Uh, 1,200 years ago, when the Cherry Blossom Festival was held, and uh, he calculated the temperature in this 1,200 years, and mm -hmm. uh, he found out the temperature increased rapidly mm -hmm. after the 18th century, mm -hmm. and, uh, uh, the, and the, the highest temperature in the last um, 120 years. Mm -hmm. So, so Japanese like and, uh, recording, mm -hmm. and also we really enjoy the changes of seasons. Mm -hmm. Now we have only four seasons: mm -hmm. spring, spring, and uh, summer, autumn, winter. Mm -hmm. But uh, traditionally, they have a uh, 72 
uh, subdivision of species that is mm -hmm. consist of five days. Mm -hmm. Maybe it comes from uh, China. Every Maybe five China days? China have a okay. uh, same, uh, we call it Japanese calendar, oh, but original from China. Okay. So maybe you also have a uh -huh. yeah, same calendar. So in, in each 72 subdivisions, mm -hmm. people select a uh, typical and uh, environmental uh, uh, changes such as the uh, weather, mm -hmm. uh, or uh, the, the bird, uh, uh, animals, and plants, and they seek to, uh, in case of uh, flowers uh, uh, arriving, or uh, the some flowers uh, start. Uh, yeah, so we're uh, observant yeah. of the uh, yeah, so changes in the nature. Yeah, the calendars of these um, nature, mm -hmm. animals, and plants. Mm -hmm. so that was the last 305. Uh, 315 years in the middle period. Yeah. So we didn't, we don't have such a calendar anymore. Mm -hmm. But I tried to make a uh, mm -hmm. current uh, <laughs> Japanese calendar, and this data can use mm -hmm. how the temperature increase uh, affects the I phenology. See. Phenology is the timing of uh, mm. yeah, I see. animals or plants behavior. So this kind of old data is really important. Mm -hmm. So, but one of the uh, weakness of the Japanese is mm -hmm. good at recording, mm -hmm. but not well analyzed. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh. Yeah. So that's a, as a science, I'm doing I see. using this variable data. What what other challenges do you see or foresee in the future the development of citizen science? City nature challenge. Mm -hmm. Language is the biggest barrier. Okay. So that is uh, made in U U.S. So most yeah. Japanese are uh, uh, not good at the English. Mm -hmm. And uh, there is a, a Japanese translation Google, mm. but that is not enough. Mm. And then uh, organizer of the citizen science provide many good materials for mm -hmm. the teachers, mm -hmm. and, uh, organizers, and uh, manuals. But for me, it's difficult to translate it, everything. So what I did is just make a simple Japanese manuals, mm -hmm. how to register the iNaturalist, how to take a good photos to be identified. So that might be a big difference between Hong Kong and Japan. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, we are you? a bit lucky here. You know, yeah. you know, English is obviously you know a big part of um, you know Hong Kong, uh, Hong Kong life here. Um, so yeah, we but we also we've used iNaturalist before the City Nature Challenge. We used it in certain bio blitzes, and we were actually able to to translate most of it and work with iNaturalist in order to sort of get the traditional Chinese sort of involved. Hopefully, at some point we can get the Japanese involved as well. I you know. hope so. Yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> okay, thank you. So enjoy your time thank in Hong Kong. You. Thanks thank a lot. You. All right.